Hello, everyone. Welcome to another delightful episode of Taylor Teaches English. In this episode, we are going to discuss words and phrases that are used in conversational English, especially in the United States. Let's begin. The first phrase is up for, U-P space for, F-O-R. Up for means to be up for something. It means you want to do it. For example, are you up for going to the movies with us? This means, do you want to go to the movies with us? Another one is, ah, I'm really not up for doing anything tonight. I'm too tired. That means, I really don't want to do anything tonight. Once again, I'm not really up for doing anything tonight. I'm not up for doing means I don't want to do. Another expression we can use is feel like doing or to be in the mood for. Let's look at some examples. Do you feel like going to a museum? No, I'm not in the mood for a museum. Do you feel like going to a museum means, do you want to go to a museum? If you say, no, I'm not in the mood to go, or I'm not in the mood for a museum, it means, I don't want to go. The difference is that these words can say no without being too harsh. If you ask somebody, do you feel like going to a museum, it makes it easier for them to say yes or no. The next is stand, S-T-A-N-D. To stand can mean to tolerate or to accept. So some people might know that stand means to be standing up, which is the opposite of sitting down. But this version of stand is your ability to deal with something or a situation. Here's an example. It's pretty hot today, but I can stand it. This means even though it's very hot, I'm still okay. I can stand it. Here's another one. He went home because he couldn't stand the hot sun. He went home because it was so hot he couldn't deal with it anymore. He could not deal with the situation of the heat. So we can say he couldn't stand the hot sun. Can't stand is often used to mean not like. For example, he says he can't stand his little sister, but we know it's not true. He says he can't stand his little sister, which means he says that he does not like his little sister and doesn't like being around her. We can use can't stand for many different things. For example, if you don't like your coworker, you could say, I really can't stand Jack. He is so annoying. Or, I really can't stand this machine. It always takes my money when I try to get a Coke. These, this means that you really don't like this machine or you really don't like this person. You have a hard time being around them. The next phrase is big fan. Big fan. To be a big fan indicates that someone does like something a lot. For example, I like movies, but I'm not a big fan of science fiction. So if you're not a big fan of something, it means you don't really like it. The next one we're going to look at is big fan. This one can be a little tricky. To not be a big fan indicates that someone does or does not like something. So you can say, I am a big fan or I am not a big fan. And they have, of course, different meanings. If I say, I like movies, but I am not a big fan of science fiction, it means I don't really like science fiction. If we want to say that we like something, we can also use the words awesome, which we have reviewed previously, cool, fantastic, and great. Let's look at another one. This one is used when people are going somewhere for a long time. Going away present. A going away present is a gift, customarily given to someone who is leaving for an extended period, 
Perhaps they're going to college, they're moving to another area, or to go work in another place. Here's an example. They gave me a picture of everyone in the office as a going away present when I left for my new job. It's common to get a going away present when someone you really care about is going to a new place. It's often used for people that are moving to a new neighborhood in a place far away from their good friends or neighbors. The next one is say, S-A-Y. It indicates making an utterance, but without indicating that it is directed at any particular person. For example, what did he say? He said that he didn't know the answer. Say to, plus the object of the pronoun or a person's name, can be used to indicate information directed at a particular person or people. For example, what did he say to you? What did he tell you? Thank you very much for listening to this episode of Taylor Teaches English. This is all we have for today. I hope you enjoy. You can follow, like, and subscribe at Taylor Teaches English on YouTube and Facebook. You can also message me on these platforms and let me know if you have questions. Thank you and have a great day.